Uh, now, uh, some admin points. I'm pretty sure you know your way in and out, and you know where the, uh, the, uh, the public facilities are. Uh, but what I would like to, uh, first of all, start off with is to thank each and every one of you for coming, and particularly our speakers who have spared this, this, uh, this evening to be with us. Um, uh, we have today, uh, at the top table, we have Phyllis Darkey, um, who will um, speak to us first. We have Aaron Kundalani from the Institute of Race Relations and the author of Scoops, the report that spoke about the revelations regarding PPE. We have uh, Saleh Mamoun from Campac, from the Campaign Against Criminalizing Communities. We have Dr. Mohammed Bari, uh, the General Secretary of the Muslim Council of Britain. We have uh, Bob Lambert, who's from the European Muslim Research Centre uh, in Exeter. And we have with us in the array, we have Andrew Slaughter and many of, of his uh, fellow colleagues, uh, members of, uh, of the Commons. Uh, and uh, many of you are friends from the media and uh, think tanks and research centres. I can see many, many uh, faces here. Um, before I hand to Phyllis Stark, I will allow each speaker to, you know, about six or seven minutes because we do want to hear from uh, each and every one of you if possible. Uh, we do want real life stories. Uh, we do want your own experiences with this. Those of you who lead organizations or represent mosques or come from various um, uh, corners of, uh, of our country, what is your experience with this particular strategy? What do you think? Um, what was your uh, take on the revelations that we uh, all were exposed to, um, and where do you think we can move on from this? And this is essentially what we want. Where do we go from here? What, what do we do? How can we solve whatever problem we are handling uh, at this moment of time? May I just mention a few apologies? Oliver McTernan is supposed to uh, come today, the director and co-founder of Forward Thinking. Unfortunately, he uh, hasn't fully recovered from uh, a surgical uh, procedure that he underwent last week. He sends his apologies. We did have a confirmation that Dominic Reed would be joining us. Unfortunately, he hasn't uh, made it for whatever reason we hope uh, and wish him well. Um, we also got uh, a phone call on Friday from uh, the Home Office um, asking us if, uh, if it was possible to send someone from the department responsible for the PVE uh, program. We welcome that. We requested that they send us a name and a title for whoever wants to come and speak and represent the, uh, the PVE uh, department. Um, we, ha we didn't get a res uh, response, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they, they have their reasons for that. Uh, but um, beyond that, I hope that uh, you will all pay attention also to one or two things that we've placed in front of you. This is um, uh, the latest edition of our quarterly called Archers. And in front of you is also a, a briefing paper about where we are, some of the pertinent questions, and what, what we recommend in order to move forward. These are meaning ideas. These can be enriched and can be... Um, you know, flesh out more with your uh, feedback. We have our minute takers <coughs> around the room, and um, hopefully, we will come at, at, at one stage during tonight to speak to you and uh, to, to uh, get your take on, on this particular issue. But without further, further ado, I'd like to hand over to Phyllis Thank you very much. Um, right, thank you in particular first to Phyllis Stark, who's been with us for a long time, to invite myself to this meeting uh, and to impose myself uh, upon you. I thought it would be useful because the select committee which I chair, that is the community for the local government, is already doing an inquiry on the PREVENT um, program. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, the PREVENT program is run jointly by the Home Office and communities for the local government. And the role of select committees, uh, like mine, is to monitor and comment on the work of the relevant government department. So to make it absolutely clear, although I am a Labour MP, I'm not here to speak for the department, far from it. Uh, my job is actually to monitor and scrutinise the department together with the rest of the committee, and Andrew Slaughter is very shortly to become a member of that committee. Um, and we're right at the beginning of this inquiry, so if I just explain to you the way the inquiry is going to go and the questions that people asked, but then I will not be volunteering my views because it would be improper for me to do so. The committee has not really started and, um, and it wouldn't be right for me to try and preempt what the committee is going to say or do. So the Select Committee uh, launched its inquiry uh, a while ago. We have already advertised for and received um, over 100, I think, different items of written evidence from a variety of organisations, including um, a number of, of um, re organisations representing Muslims. We did not select them, they have selected themselves, and I've not read through all the evidence yet, but it's 
very clear to me that we have got a lot of um, varied views, some of them violent and disagreeing, some of them robustly um, disagreeing with others. So, I mean, we have clearly got a good spread of, of opinions and evidence coming in, obviously not just um, Muslim organisations. Um, all of that written evidence will be published um, very shortly on the uh, committee's website. Um, so you can access it via okay. the um, House of Commons website. I don't think that's the um, we will then be proceeding with a series of um, evidence, oral evidence sessions, which will be in public. The first one is on the 30th of November. We tend to meet on a Monday. Um, again, if you keep an eye on the committee website, it will tell you about a few days beforehand um, who the witnesses are going to be. We have sought, again, to select witnesses to represent very different views so that we get different um, inputs um, uh, to our deliberations. Um, we are likely to come to a conclusion, um, I think, by the early 20 new year, and we will then publish a report with recommendations. That will obviously be a public document. Uh, the government is obliged within eight weeks to respond to our recommendations. They tend to have to agree to them, but if they don't agree, they have to explain why not. Um, and their reply will also be public. Now, the sorts of questions that we asked um, to guide people in um, giving us um, written evidence were um, questions about the rationale behind the PREVENT program. Um, you know, is, is it sensible, the rationale is it correct? Questions about whether you can actually identify um, the individuals who are going to convert, if I can put it that way, to being violent extremists, as opposed to merely thinking about it or discussing it philosophy. Um, evidence of the effectiveness, or otherwise, of the PREVENT program. The effect of the program on community cohesion, and I think that's where the issues that are going to be particularly talked about um, in the report, and which have come out in some of the um, written evidence that we've already received. The effect on community cohesion, the feeling that um, the programme which has been expressed by a number of witnesses, not just Muslims actually, that the programme is seen as um, unfairly targeting uh, the Muslim community and is divisive, which has also been alluded to in some of the hours George Palmer has, has made. Uh, what about other forms of violent extremism? And uh, the issue of um, who exactly uh, is the government talking to amongst the Muslim community and are they talking to the right people? And finally, um, the issues about local authorities who are mostly delivering um, the prevent program. Do the local authorities know what they're doing um, and, uh, or not? Uh, and um, is that the right way of doing it? So that's a series of questions, really, that we've posed. And as I say, we're not going to come to any of you until um, we've concluded hearing the, the oral evidence and starting to write our report. So I'm certainly primarily here um, to listen. Um, and certainly, at, although the date for submitting written evidence has been passed, and I'm not encouraging you all to suddenly rush to do it, um, you know, I think it would be perfectly reasonable if there is a note of this meeting, um, if that is sent to the um, committee for um, You know, I should mention it to him on Monday. Um, and I'm sure we can include, include that as a, a valuable addition. And um, otherwise, obviously, um, you know, keep an eye on the on the committee website, and um, uh, I'm I'm very hopeful that the inquiry will allow us, as a cross-party group of parliamentarians, to um, look critically at the Prevent program and to come to some useful conclusions and recommendations, which I hope will inform future government policy on this matter. Thank you very much for this. Uh, may I just ask before I hand over to Aaron, um, when are we likely to hear an outcome from the committee? Um, I think we will be publishing our report um, in January 2010. I think it's most likely. Um, now, um, if, if I may, I'd like to um, personally thank uh, our next speaker, Aaron Kubinani, for coming. I know that it, uh, he, over the past few days, has come under immense uh, pressure and from, from all corners. Um, and for him to also spare this evening and come and share his views with us, I think that, that was uh, extremely generous and kind of him. And if I may now second uh, Lord Ackman's invitation for, for you to, uh, to join me. In the Thank you very much. Um, this is actually the second time in the last few days that I've 
trying to speak somewhere um, expecting to be able to debate someone from the Home Office and they've not appeared. Um, which is unfortunate because I think, I think actually at some point um, what would be very productive is to have um, a 